Hey guys and welcome, welcome back to my channel. So I am back with another trying new to me video. If you guys haven't seen one of these before, basically I'm trying new things that I might have received in PR, new to the market things that I might have picked up, or things that are not new at all, technically as far as when they came out. But guess what? It's new to me because it's my first time trying it. So you guys want to see that, then just stay tuned. So the first thing I tried is this new NYX Dip Shape Go Long Wear Brow Pencil thing. Um, I'm not sure if I used it correctly, like I've already done it. Um, I think it's supposed to be like a, there's the product down here. You can dip into it, but like I only get this end. I don't get the actual brow shaper end. Maybe I just can't figure out how to open this. Um, you know, learning curve, but for the most part, I feel like this gives a little bit more of a, you know, hair look to your brows as opposed to maybe just filling it in. Maybe that's just me, but it's something I would definitely play with again moving forward. So there's that for this. So the first thing I want to try out is this NYX Modern Dreamer palette. I think I might have gotten... I might have received two PR packages from NYX. I feel like I have quite a few things to try out from them. I'm going to try this palette out today. Fun fact about NYX. Let me, where's that brush? Oh, sorry about that. Um, But like I was saying, fun fact, NYX is one of the few brands that I've worked with that actually reached out to me and asked me how I was doing mentally. Not, you know, like these other brands who suddenly remember that black people exist and they wanna add you to their PR list or they suddenly wanna start supporting black creators so they message you, hey, is it okay if we post you on our Instagram page? They're a brand I've worked with before, had a relationship with before who was like, hey, you know, you can imagine that this is a very emotionally draining time right now so we wanted to reach out and ask you know like how are you holding up how are you doing and that's that that meant that one meant something to me and two it really puts all of this performative action <laughs> that's going on into perspective here because i've worked with quite a few brands and like i said nyx is one of the very few who reached out to see how i was doing and when you see that and um, see the other way that these brands are deciding that they are now going to be inclusive. It, you're just like, and I think it was Alyssa Ashley who was like, what do you guys think of these brands that are showing their behinds, getting called out, like the receipts are being dropped on them. Basically like everything that's going on uh, with, with like the light bulb suddenly going off and brands realizing, oh, there are black people in the beauty community. Um, and I, I believe I answered her and my thoughts to anyone who's watching this and cares is that I felt like this was coming. Not this situation that we're in right now happening and I saw it coming that way, but I felt like sooner or later this was going to come where um, something was going to have to shake in the beauty. Like that's, that's the best way I can describe it. Something was going to have to happen because makeup's been boring lately and i've been saying that in my videos for a while like the makeup companies have gotten boring they've gotten lazy they've gotten just it's like okay we're we're maybelline and that's really all we have to rely on to sell our products you know i felt like something was going to have to shake in the community where brands would actually have to uh try to get people's money and this is unfortunately the situation that um tipped it off and now watching how they're going about it it's frustrating <laughs> like i feel like that's the best way to describe it it's just frustrating because so much of it is just so disingenuous like so much of it like even before all of this it never really sat well with me when brands would be like oh tag your favorite creators we want to work with them because that's your job. <laughs> as the PR person, especially as the PR person in charge of like influencer marketing, that is literally your job to find the influencers that you want to work with your company. And it's it's easy for you. It's not hard to find the influencers to represent your products because they're they're tagging you. You know, they're letting you know like we use your products. All you have to do is slide on your Instagram page to see who's tagging you. If you're looking for them on YouTube, all you have to do is type in your product name and see whose face, whose video comes up using your product. Same thing with Twitter. So that never really sat well with me when brands did that before all of this. 
So now that they're like, oh, you know, like tag your favorite influencers, who should we be working with moving forward? It's like, okay, well, that was always your job, but I was like, okay, you've put your job on the consumer to find these people for you, even though I knew you saw them. Like I, I know these brands see the people who are tagging them because that again is part of your job. Like some of these people literally what they are supposed to do is go through their tags and see who's using their stuff, see who they're supposed to be uh, reposting and who they're supposed to be working with and all that stuff, right? So it's like, okay, even though you had the consumer doing your job before and you're still doing it now, if we wanna move past that, we can move on to the next question of why now? Especially when I said, I know for a fact you saw these people. What I want you to ask yourself before you can really become an ally and before you can say like, oh, I wanna start supporting the the black creators in the community you need to ask yourself and really be able to answer why now why is it before when you saw those people in your tag sections when you saw their videos pop up on youtube why didn't they fit your aesthetic for them to be able to be on your page for you to be able to post them before why is it now you can do that now if you're the uh type to believe that life is nothing but sunshine and roses maybe you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe they have suddenly realized <laughs> that maybe we shouldn't exclude black people maybe right but you know if you have common sense maybe you would think that the reason why now is because they realize oh we we kind of can't ignore this anymore um for a couple reasons one we don't want to be called out by these creators anymore um two because the core audience that we've spent so long trying to uh, market to them and them only, n even they're not giving us a pass anymore. You know, I've seen a lot of, um, I think I mentioned this in the uh, Victoria's Secret video, I've seen a lot of people who are catered to by these brands say, guess what, even if I am catered to you, how you treat other people matters to me. So if I see that you don't, cater to everyone or you don't put in the effort to be as inclusive especially as inclusive as a lot of you like to say that you are i'm still not going to buy from you like i was speaking to um someone i think a couple hours ago and she was like um i don't care if i can fit into your clothes if you actively go out of your way to ignore plus sizes i'm not shopping there so that's another reason why it might be a now type of thing is why you care, right? And another reason of why now is that it's marketable. <laughs> you can make money off of being inclusive now, even though people have been saying for years now, you're probably going to make more money if you sell more foundation shades. If you make them more available, you'll probably make more. But especially right now, it's more marketable and it's better for business for you to say Black Lives Matter even though like receipts have been pulled of people saying black lives matter now who just a year ago were saying that the the term itself is problematic which okay um but yeah you know it's marketable think about it would you would you rather be the brand saying black lives matter and making it look like it's it's genuine or do you want to be the brand who says mm, i'm i'm actually okay with my audience that i have right now and not including black people or not including deeper skin tones which one looks better when it comes to how you how you market which one looks better when it comes to making money and it's it's working a lot of the brands who are you know being more vocal about what's going on you see tweets saying hmm i need to I have been sleeping on Glossier. Let me go check out what things they have on their site. I have been sleeping on, you know, milk makeup. Let me go uh, see what I should go purchase from them. So that's another reason for it. I had to pause what I was saying and I still managed to mess this site up with my shaky hand, but that's okay. You know what? We're just going to move on. This is more of a chat video than making sure it comes out 100% perfect. This is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I've been talking about this for a few videos now. Um, it's a primer. Uh, but what was I saying? Oh, what's even more frustrating though is seeing the brands that have actively <laughs> gone out of their way to exclude black consumers and creators. Like at least some of these brands in recent years have made attempts to be more inclusive. You know, I give 
acknowledgement where acknowledgement is due but to see and i think i made a whole um thread about it on twitter to see brands like all may physicians formula uh it cosmetics who uh lc all these is that how you i don't know if, if that's how you pronounce that brand all these brands saying like oh black lives matter one of them one of them said we're going to continue to boost black creators like we've been doing and then you go look at their page and like no no one no one darker than a paper bag is on their instagram feed and it's like at that point it, it's 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 upsetting because it's so disingenuous that it's almost disrespectful like what we're gonna continue to do what when you can literally look and see just how much we've gone out of our way to not do that but like i said it's marketable now you know and you don't want to be the brand being called out for not saying that but at that point like, i feel like people would respect it more if you just didn't say anything or just kept the same energy like just keep the same energy of being the brand who is not going to be inclusive who is not going to make you know adequate ranges in their products like keep mm. like october 2020 will make it five years since i've been doing this and it's like nothing new has been added to the conversation you know all these things that brands are reaching out to say oh how can we be better how can we support you better how can we be better as a brand and the answer to all of those questions none of that is anything that hasn't been said so again the whole like why are you so willing to listen and change now but like imagine how tiring that is imagine you know i've only been doing this for five oh, october will make it five years but the people who have been on here for 10 years, the people who in the industry itself have been saying this for decades, it's that's that's why it feels like a slap in the face when stuff like this happens because it's like you care in the moment right now because that's the trendy thing to do to care in the moment right now because it's it's good for business to care right now. And I think if it was something that was actually going to last moving forward it wouldn't be as frustrating for people but we've seen this before <laughs> we've seen this before not to this extent which is why this might give people a little bit more hope that it's something that's going to stick moving forward but we've seen this before we've seen where there's something in the public that makes brands suddenly want to start posting black creators or suddenly you know now it's oh well they came out with 40 foundations we're coming out with 60 foundations we're coming out with 100 foundations and then a couple months later they launch a bronzer that has you know two shades in it we've seen it before um the country in general right now what we're seeing is something that we haven't seen in the recent um things that have happened before i know that sounds but you guys know what i mean so maybe that is why you can hold out a little bit of hope that this is not just something that's trending in the beauty community right now and brands are going to continue acting the way that they're acting right now and influencers like they don't get a pass <laughs> just because they're influencers like the the but i've i've especially on influencers i've spoken on this before remember the whole tart thing where um where's the I have two of these new NYX Bear With Me skin tints. This is in the shade Deep Mocha. This is in the shade Deep Espresso. I probably need to use Deep Espresso. So let's go with that. Um, but remember what I was saying with the whole NYX thing and how so many influencers were so proud to come out and you know denounce Tarte for their poor foundation range. And then they went back to promoting brands like it cosmetics all may and you know those, those same influencers now are coming out with their you know um oh full face of black owned makeup brands and in those videos they would they literally all use beauty bakery juvia's place fenty um which um but even even with those influencers oh maybe i can't use this shade Mm, I can. Mm, let me see what the other one's looking like. Ooh, that is. Maybe I'll mix the both of them. I'm not really in the <laughs> position right now to really figure out which shade I would need to use. I'm just gonna go ahead and use them both. 
Um, but even with influencers, like that's why it's so hard to take like any of them, influencers or brands seriously, because it's like, we've seen this, be this behavior before and we know how a lot of y'all act like behind the camera. So it's like, you want to hold out hope that something will come up. and like this wasn't all pointless and that this wasn't all just a moment for social media right now but i'm not gonna lie it really is hard to feel that way honestly it, it really is hard to feel that way especially since like i already see brands saying like oh we're gonna go back to our you know normal regular posts but don't think we're giving up on you know speaking out about black lives matter and speaking out about black creators and it's like why would you have to make that distinction if this is your new normal? You see what I'm saying? Like, why would you have to point out that we're going back to our normal beauty posts, but we'll still be posting beauty creators? Like, you should just move on how you would move on if that is something that you actually plan to continue doing. You see what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't have to, um, like, cool, you posted 10 black creators in a row but moving forward we know you're not going to do that so how are you going to incorporate black creators into your promotions into your feeds into your aesthetics because we know we all know brands have them how are you going to genuinely incorporate them without making it so obvious that we've hit this month's quota for how many black creators we can post this month you see like so that's why um, it's, it's hard to hold out hope for some of these brands, but you know, if you're someone who wants to look on the bright side, like you want to give that to them, I guess. I've been asked now, what can we do to be better? And I'm going to tell you guys the same exact thing that I tell everyone who asked me. Um, I think it was, it was Benefit who said, moving forward, we are going to, um, do better with representing our black creators and consumers and whatever blah 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 and i quote tweeted benefit and i told them hopefully that starts with you actually making products that those black creators can use to promote your brand because that, that's kind of like the points of this whole especially beauty creator thing like you want to work with these creators because they use your products and then consumers seeing them use your products want to buy those products how are you going to be able to support black creators moving forward if you don't make products that black creators can use that would entice you to want to pay them to promote you? Okay, so if you really are interested in, I mean, stop pointing at you guys. If you really are interested in what you can do as a brand to do better, that starts from the inside, okay? Um, you guys know they did the pull up or shut up challenge which uh if you guys if you guys don't know about it basically brands were asked to share what their offices look like you know like how many black employees do you have how diverse is your office you know and that's not just um like those numbers don't just show why some of these brands are just so disconnected with the black community those numbers also show like why these brands don't post, you know, like men in makeup, why they don't post, um, you know, others, uh, th that, that medium skin tone and stuff like that. And it's like, you can't say that you're inclusive and you can't say that your brand, um, represents this and represents that when your office doesn't include those other communities that you tap into. It just doesn't make sense because that's how you get these, these tone deaf posts, like the, the tart and the, what was it? Uh, oh, the, the, the Asian slur with Tarte. You know, if, if you had uh, an employee on the team, they might've been, you know, like I, I can assure you, if there was a black person on the team who that, who that post ran by and it said the N word instead of the Asian slur, they would have, maybe, maybe we shouldn't do that. You see what I'm saying? Like it's, you can't always catch things that might be microaggressions or just the wrong thing to say if no one in your office has experienced that. If no one in your office lives that. Okay, yeah, um, some of us can say like we're allies to these different communities and we, we understand those things, 
but it's not always. You know, sometimes you do really have to live things to understand them. So if your office doesn't include people who who do experience those things, people who do live that life, how can you really say that you're going to do better? Because there's really no one there to say, we need a little bit more of that. Maybe not so much that. Oh, we gotta, we gotta do better in this section. You see what I'm saying? So um, I tell these brands that it starts from the inside and it's like, I refuse to believe that you're not getting qualified applicants for these positions, you're just not hiring them. And you gotta ask yourself, you know, like, how are you getting out of your own bubble? Like we think about it when people say, you know, you graduate from high school, you go to college within your hometown, you marry within your hometown, you get a job within your hometown, and then you move to someone else's house within the, well, your own house at that point, within the same hometown, like, how are you getting out of your bubble? How are you going to see life at a bigger perspective if everyone around you, if everyone you surround yourself with is the same, if everyone around you is the same, you know? So um, that's a step one there of what you can do to be better. Um, after that, move on to the products that you make. Are those better? You know, again, like how can you say you want to support creators if those creators can't create anything with your products, which is what their job is. And then after you do that, you work on making better products for yourselves. I'm going to use this as bronzer today. You guys said that they came out with deeper colors. I thought this was one of the deeper colors is the shade leader. But then you guys said they came out with even more uh, deeper shades. So let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to use this as blush. Um, but after you move on from that, and it is time to start working with creators, um, you should be able to pick up on black creators the same way that you pick up on non-black creators. Like that, the thing I keep saying to people is like, literally no one's asking you to do anything that you don't already do. Like literally all you have to do is give black creators the same opportunities and the same treatment that you give everyone else. So I'm not sure why we're doing this tap dance of what can we you already know what to do <laughs> like you see you see why it's fresh and you see why i'm at a point where it's like i don't have words anymore because it's just like what do you mean what do we do just do what you do <laughs> to a different group of people like am i in a twilight zone that's literally how i feel having this discussion like uh, this is from Hourglass. It's their Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. So you guys know they have the what, foundation concealer primer. Now they've done a foundation concealer. Um, now they have a setting spray to go with it. How does it? Oh, okay. But back to what I was saying. What can we do to be better and to help you guys? Okay, well, you know how you collaborate with big influencers and you make eyeshadow palettes, blushes, all those other type of collabs? Do the same thing with black creators who have the same numbers, who are going to bring you in the same sales, if not more. Jackie Hina, just saying. Not saying like Jackie's the only big creator that they can collaborate with, but that's something that, um, consumers like to bring up when they're bringing up this discussion of, well, they don't make those shades because um, black people aren't going to buy them. How are you going to buy something that doesn't exist? I never really get an answer to that question, but the same thing goes for creators and how brands work with them. Like that same thought process is there. Like, well, we can't work with you because you're not going to bring in as many likes. You're not going to bring in as many sales. And like they've shown time and time again with, um, it's my Ray Ray with Shayla, with Jackie, with all of these big creators. They have they have the numbers for a reason because they have that same type of support, if not more. So I, I want to hear what other reason they wouldn't bring you in the same numbers other than, you know, they're black. So um, so that's what you could do to uh, be better. You know, the same way once someone goes viral, someone non black goes viral uh, and you're quick to want to work with them so you can uh, ride the coattails of that little fame that they've got for the minute. You can do the same thing um, with a black creator who goes viral for something. Like, why Why do I have to hold your hand through this? <laughs> why do I have to tell you the obvious of literally just do the same thing with those creators? But okay, 
Okay. And it's not as simple as just simply saying, oh, just shop black. A lot of these black owned makeup brands, they don't ship internationally because they don't have the resources. They're still small businesses. So that's already cutting them off from a percentage of consumers that their competitors already have access to because they're not starting these brands out with, you know, million dollar investments. They're not being handed down these brands that were already mainstream. So th that, that fight is going to already be harder for them. And a lot of the times the fight is hard because the black owned black being associated with it makes it harder for them. It's it, same thing goes with black creators. You know, I've watched Carly Bible for years. I've never felt the need to tell her, oh, I still watch you even though that I'm black. But you know how many times I've gotten that type of comment before? And a lot of the times I'm assuming like people don't mean anything wrong, don't mean anything, you know, intentionally when saying that, but you gotta ask yourself like why that even matters. <laughs> like why do you feel like that that distinction even has to be made there? And why do you feel like because we're two different skin tones, you can't learn the same things from me? If I have oily skin and you have oily skin and I'm telling you about a product that's good for oily skin and it comes in different shades, all you have to all you have to go do is go get it in your shade. It's still going to work the same well if it works how I say it works, it's still going to work on your oily skin. It's just working in your skin tone. So same thing goes with some of these black owned brands and even from our own where they're not given that sa those same courtesies, those same um, chances that their competitors are given simply for that association of being black. So it's not as easy as some people would like to say, well, just, just do this. Um, I tried to use this new CoverGirl mascara, but it literally didn't show on my eyes and I forgot. Ayesha was even a spokesperson for CoverGirl because I feel like I don't see them use her that much. But yeah, that is it for my face. And I feel like that is pretty much it for this discussion. Like I'm tired. That's the best way to describe it. Like I'm tired of but I'm gonna continue fighting the fight because I, I also don't have an option. <laughs> you know, this fight determines how I am treated as a person on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really don't have the option to not fight it. But if I'm gonna continue to fight it, then I, I don't have the patience anymore for a lot of these brands. I don't have the patience for a lot of a lot of the stuff that goes on in the beauty community anymore. So with that being said, like I need influencers and brands to think about it. Before you make that post right now, before you make your little Black Lives Matter, your little Black Square post right now, are you prepared to be called out about this seven months from now? Because I, I'll, ha I'll make the time seven months from now to come back and see just how well you kept your word of what you'll be doing moving forward. Before you do that, before you jump on this trend, are you prepared for that seven months from now? Because if not, then just sit there and keep the same energy that you had before. But yeah, that is it. Um, I don't know, uh, this this little rant, I guess you could call it. I need to get it off my chest. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm really not sure where to end this video because I wasn't really expecting it to go where it did, but it did, and you know, um, someone had to say it. So I hope, you know, this conversation did something for you, you know, helped, cl uh, helped you think about some things that are going on right now. Um, make sure to thumbs up, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one.